Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Would good you like evening. to introduce yourselves? First one, Jess. Okay. Hi, I'm Jess Green. Um, I run Pink Chili Virtual Assistants, uh, which is a virtual assistants company that specialises in social media and digital marketing. Uh, that side of the business is where people pay me to do it for them. And my other business, which is Jess Green Digital Diva, is a social media and digital marketing training company where I train small businesses to use various social media channels themselves so they kind of complement each other but kind of have different service offerings fabulous juliet i'm uh, juliet otherwise known as the witch of stitch or even <laughs> j5 um, i tend to make rather bizarre looking bags and other products normally the ideas come from the customer they've got an idea a vision and i make the vision into a reality so it's pretty much all custom made. Fabulous stuff, if I may say. Um, excellent. Uh, Paul? Yes, that's me. Um, I like to think of myself as an IT consultant. Um, Mr. Know-it-all with IT, really. Um, in recent years, um, I've built up my own business, Eastwish Limited, um, and we've been uh, designing and developing um, IT solutions for businesses. So whether or not that's just one computer on a desk or 20 computers in a server. Um, so that's been that side of things, along with repairing laptops and things, of course. Um, but more recently, again, I've been moving more towards the web and uh, web development and uh, sort of like web solutions, really. That's Excellent. Well, there's more questions I'm sure we'd like to ask you. Simon. Hi, my name is Simon. Um, I am an SC personal training. Pretty self-explanatory, does what it says on the tin. Um, I'm a fully qualified personal trainer and fitness instructor and specialise in offering one-to-one -one personal training or small group training. And I also have several fitness classes of my own which run regularly every week. Fabulous. Okay. Um, let's start with Jess. Um, anybody want to ask Jessica a question? I'm sure you must want to ask Jessica a question. I would quite like to ask Jess a question. Go for it. Go on then. So are you, are you mainly targeting uh, like one-on-one -on -one business coaching or are you doing group sessions and things like that? It's all of my offering is purely all online, so I, I'm not kind of going down the meeting people face to face route. It's all through Skype, um, email training packages, ebooks. I'm going to be bringing out some e courses um, and Google Hangouts as well. So it's predominantly kind of um, done one to one, but via kind of vir well done virtually basically. Um, so that's the kind of main offering. It's not kind of classroom based or anything like that. Um, but there are a couple of occasions where, particularly for my clients on the pink chili side, uh, that are local, you know, where possible, if I can meet them, it is obviously a bit better to meet them face to face. But yeah, it's, it's mainly a virtual business. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. So it's a proper 21st century business coaching take on things. Yes, yes. Fully online, yeah. Cool. Well, we've got, um, sorry to interrupt, Paul, fabulous question. We've now got uh, Sir Neil Weber of ProClean here. And, of course, Sir James Sutton from, well, I'll let, Jay, I'll let you, what we've done, James and Neil, we've, we've let you guys introduce yourselves. So, James, do you want to go first and tell us what you do, sir? Oh, we can't hear him. Can you hear us, James? He might be on mute. I know there's a little... No, he might be on mute. Hit the... Um, check that to your system. Up. We'll go to um, Neil while you're trying to find that out, James. Sir Neil. Evening. Good Hello. Evening. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. sir. That's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> we'll, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Tell us what you do, Neil. Right, well, that is me, which looks backwards first on my computer, but never mind. Looks okay here. Yeah. We are by far the best carpet and upholstery cleaners in the entire world. Of course. <laughs> as long as you supply a cup of tea, then I'm more than happy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Mr. G. 
<laughs> tell us how long have you been doing it, Neil? Um, this is our fourth year now. Come okay. just over three and a half years. Um, took it over from my brother-in-law, um, who retired due to ill health. Uh, we started off with one customer. That's all he had retained on the books. And we're now up to, I think it's over 1,500 now. Wow. That's so that's not bad for three and a half years. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, if I had a hat, I would go like that, but I haven't. Thank you very much. Hey, I was um, Paul's Paul's done for you. <laughs> and we also have a fantastic apprentice who is Jessica's next door neighbour. Yeah, ah. she might be able to hear you if you shout loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I have noticed, even though she is your next door neighbour, you have never sent any cupcakes down with her. Terrible. No, I have not. Which is incredibly <laughs> poor, sure. <laughs> <laughs> James. Oh, um, my butler just brought my drink in, so I'm just going to oh, grab it. Oh, hi, butler. <laughs> oh, he's gone now. He was told oh, not to, to talk when he came oh, in. Yes. yes, he's got his... Yeah. James, are, are we ready to go your side, sir? No. No sound. Oh, dear. Okay. I don't know if anybody noticed in the chat, he did say that his microphone has been muted due to the amount of people in the chat, so perhaps... Um, yeah. Perhaps I'll mute myself yeah, and hope that he can... Ah, okay. That, ah, I see. That could be... I wonder. Hmm. Okay, try that, James. No. I wonder why that is. It's quite interesting. Well, mine is default set to mute. Ah. Okay. Um, we'll explore that then. No mic. Is, hang on. I'm just reading James' message. Um, great thing about these, too, you can see the messages on the right hand side. Uh, mm. So I'm just reading yeah. that. No, the mic is on me now. Let me try a few other things. Okay, so um, James is going to try a few other things while he's, he's, he's having a go there. James, just in, really interrupt us if you get any go, if you get a go on there. Any oh, questions? I heard him. I heard him. Shout, shout. Shout. Can you hear me? Very faintly. Oh, yeah. Faintly. Oh, faintly. Okay, hang on. You can turn it up. Do a Dom Jolly and shout. He might be using those paper cut ones, which are yeah, not good. <laughs> How's that? Could be a bit louder, James. How's that? We can hear, but it's still quite quiet. Yep, could do with a little bit more volume, James. Okay. In the meantime, while you're playing with that, we'll ask um, any questions for Juliet. So, yeah, I've got one. Okay. Go on, so, um, I've seen on your Facebook page, Juliet, that you've been doing a lot of these kind of lace um, products. Yeah. How are those made on the machine? Do you kind of like machine them out and then stitch them together? How is it? Yeah, how is it done? it's kind of complicated. You have to have uh, a fabric which dissolves within water, and you put oh. that on the machine, and then it just stitches. It is literally just thread. That's all it is. It's just two lots of thread, bottom and top, and it just goes all the way through the design. Um, wow. Probably have anything between two and maybe ten parts to each design, and then you have to either sew them together or glue them together in some cases because you can't get the stitching right. Um, it's impossible to get the stitching a hundred percent spot on with some of them because of the way it's got to go under the machine. Yeah. Um, so it's it's quite a complicated process. It's not something that somebody would just start doing. Yeah. It's good 18 months or so for me to learn it so it, it's not easy <laughs> and has it been popular if you had people kind of it has it's surprising I thought because the items were quite small um, because they take so long to make the price can be quite high for each product but as they're something you wouldn't part with it seems people will pay a yeah. amount of money for something like that so, well yeah. How, have you got anything to show us? Um, I've got none of the large pieces of lace because they just go as soon as they're finished. I might oh, wow. 
smaller. Um, yeah. There's only a, a rough sort of idea that these ones. Oh, wow. Are, in now. I think he's got some. Um, what do you reckon there, Paul? Am I going to butt in? No, great. Oh. Yay! Yay. Can, I, can I stop shouting now? Yes. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in two seconds. We'll come back to you in two seconds, James. And hear That's your, fine. Your business, sir. Um, so can I have another look at that, please, Julia? Yeah. Yeah. So these these are the new ones that are just coming out. The new sort of lace ideas. Wow. Um, the, wow. These are specifically designed to go on tables, really, for weddings. Uh, they'll, they'll more than likely have numbers on, and then the numbers will be allocated to, so obviously, the tables so people know where they're sitting. It's just an added something. Um, it's just one item that's going into the sort of wedding area that I'm, I'm sort of dipping my toe into a little bit now, because they're more keepsake items as well. Once the wedding's over, you've got something you can keep. How long would it take to make one? Oh, they're unique. Um, just that one alone is, is actually a really simple design, this one, and that takes around an hour. Wow. It's been a full working day for a, a whole wedding, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, can we welcome James into the room now? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, James. I'm probably shouting at you all now, am I? No, you're absolutely <laughs> fine, sir. Yeah. Well, okay. Good to see Hello. you, and Happy New Year to you all of us. I haven't said that, I do apologise. James, all. tell us all about your business, sir. So, yeah, so I own with Michelle Busflies Healthcare, um, and we sell a number of eye-related products online. Um, at the moment, we're particularly excited by because we're launching some new swimming goggles with our own brand of Sutton Swimwear. Wow. We're working on getting that online, and it's a... Uh, well, we reckon it's a particularly stylish goggle. So, um, as I see, three of you are wearing glasses currently. I need them. I, <laughs> I do wear them, but I've got contacts in. <laughs> ah, that's for you. Would you like to look at it? Yes, please. Yes. We're doing show and tell. Here we are. This is one I made earlier. It's blue pizza all over again, isn't it? Ooh. So it's. Ooh. Oh, it's, it's actually mirrored. I don't know if you can see that on the front. Oh, oh yeah. So we we particularly were interested in this because watching the Olympics, we saw that they all had mirrored goggles, and at the moment, we sell about well over thirty goggles now in prescription. Um, none of them have mirrored lenses on, so this is going to be quite a unique feature. We hope. So James, uh, is that for like walking down the high street with them on? Yeah, that's you know that's the way to turn heads and uh, <laughs> attract a partner. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> they look better on, I think, than. Yeah, yeah. It's always difficult to show them when they're off. Yeah, we did a we've done a photo shoot with a, a lady in the village, and we've got a um, a picture of them sort of with a model wearing them a swimsuit, and then it's got sort of water dripping off them, so they end up looking much better than even just a still shot of them, because yeah. you get that feeling of what they're going to be used for. Mm. Well, we look forward to seeing those images. Yeah, that's right, yeah. We're looking forward to seeing them flying out like hotcakes. What, 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 so, are they for sale now, James? Yep, they are indeed, yep. They cost £25 a pair. Oh, nothing then, really. That's good. That's really reasonable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Very I, good. Compared to the price of glasses, when essentially they're doing the same job, they're um, yeah, they're pretty good value, really. Can I ask you a question, James? I know the answer, but maybe some of our our colleagues in the room or people who see this later, um, I know there are some funny stories, or maybe not so funny, about um, going swimming with um, your contact lenses in. But w would you like to explain the, the dangers there, please? Yeah. Well, I mean, there are there are dangers and and relative dangers. I mean, one of one of my op school colleagues had an issue one night when he went swimming and just sort of turned up at his pool. I don't quite know how he got in the entrance, but he turned up and um, got changed and took his glasses off and walked into the pool and didn't think anything of it because there were people in there. Couldn't see them very well. And it was only when he was asked to leave because it was ladies' nights. <laughs> oh, no. And being a gentleman realised that... Yeah, <laughs> 
there are downsides to it. Now that I mean that's obviously just a humorous one, but it was it, that it, you, Neil? Is that a story yeah, about that Neil Webber? I yeah. would yeah. make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> Me. <laughs> There's the potential pitfall, certainly. Um, and then we've had there've been other cases recently where people have had eye infections, from, particularly from wearing contact lenses while they've been swimming. Uh, which can cause serious problems. So, yeah, you know, there's there's quite a market for them, really. Well, well hopefully this may may energise some of that uh, response. Um, well, that's another I've reason why exercise is bad for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Poor old Simon's our keep fit uh, guy here. There's just been lazy little slobs. Well, uh, I, I, I put myself in uh, in that category. Uh, you, you other guys may not. So, uh, okay, great. Um, I've got a quick question yes, for so um, James. Great. It's about um, the Nat Origin stuff. Oh yeah. Um, so, which I am a. I don't know if you can see it. This is my favourite product ever. Your nice pencil eyeliner. This is the pencil eyeliner now. It probably doesn't interest some of you, but I really struggle with eye makeup because I've always had problems with my eyes getting sore and stuff. Um, and when um, Michelle sent me a couple of products, this is, you know, it's such a great eyeliner. I mean, I used to spend nearly £30 on a specific eyeliner, uh, which sounds crazy. Um, but, it's, but it's because it was um, a Lancome one. And uh, it was one that was supposed to be good for your eyes, but I still have problems with it. But um, the the main benefit to me is that obviously your products are vegetarian. Um, so I just wondered whether you've kind of have you really pushed down that kind of vegetarian route yet? Because I think that could potentially be quite a big area. I mean, do you go to things like uh, vegetarian shows, trade shows, and things like that to kind of showcase the products? It's one of the areas we're looking at for this year, both the, the vegetarian and the allergy market as more specialist routes to market. Because as a small company, we just can't compete with the, the launches that come out, even with natural products from the big companies. Yeah. Realising that having a following in a niche area will give us still longevity uh, yeah. as the product range goes. So certainly, um, you know, we've got good links with the Vegetarian Society and going with them and Allergy UK to events is where yeah. we're looking to try and capitalise on it, certainly. Yeah, good, yeah. So what is it in makeup then that is animal-based? A lot of them will have animal byproducts in, so possibly um, um, the... Whale fat and things yeah, like that. Yeah, things, it's, it's, rendered, it's rendered fats often that, you know, yeah. used in them. I've got quite a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or sometimes well, colourings will. That too, uh, <laughs> but sometimes yeah. colourings will be derived from animal products as well. Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, there's a red colouring that's often used in makeup that is made from crushed beetles. Mm. Oh, that yeah. is that cochineal, is it? Pardon? Is that the cochineal one? I uh, I can't remember the name of it to be honest, but I know that there are a lot of things that are derived like that. So um, yeah. Wow. Okay, let's spin through the room. We're, we're going to wrap this up in about, say, five minutes. I hope you've enjoyed the experience. It's, um, I think it's quite unique, isn't it? Yeah, yeah different. Yeah. So if I can ask, I'll, I'll ask each and every one of you a, a quick question, and you may want to quickly jump in. We'll, we'll start with Simon, because he's on the end of mine. Um, Simon, what, what, um, so your, your keep fit, what's your speciality? I know you do kettlebells, uh, but what's, your, uh, what's the thing you really want to see more people uh, enjoy this year? Okay, um, yeah, if I had to pick one thing that I probably enjoy more than anything is um, one is the kettlebell, both the classes and teaching it in a one-to-one -one environment. Um, and also hopefully within the next six months I'm hoping to get um, a boxing for fitness class started. Um, okay. I can also coach that as a one-to-one -one session as well. Um, that's something that's really enjoyable. Um, and tends to go down well, pretty well, with most of the clients that I've got at the moment. Um, so, th yeah, those are the two things that I really kind of put out there as in terms of a, a good high-intensity cardio, but also a, a good strength as well. Uh, anybody else want to ask Simon a quick question? Um, is it um, primarily just like one-to-one -one sessions with you as well, or do you do other things? Like, I mean, do you, at the moment, right now, are you all about just one-to-one, -one or 
do you do more people at a time and stuff like that? I've got um I've got three classes. Um the the first one is um a high intensity <laughs> interval class which is on a Tuesday evenings um at Roxham Village Hall. And then I do a kettlebell class on a Thursday evening um, at BGN School. And then I have one outdoor class, which is every other week, um, which is at Spiceball Park. But because of the flooding, obviously that was flooded um, like on last year. So at the moment we're using the wreck at Easington. Um, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks we're hoping to move that back to Spiceball again. Um, so no, it's, it's not just all about the one-to-one, -one, the classes. You know, have their place, um, but in terms of, of looking after after clients and if they've got specific needs, then yeah, one to one it is more suitable. Um, but if they're confident enough to come into a group environment, then they're welcome to come to classes. Cool. Sounds fab. Anybody else got any questions for Simon quickly? Before we move on to Paul, with his different hat on, I notice. I think he's swapping hats. <laughs> Anybody else notice that? No, yeah. I, don't, I, don't I decided to put my hat on. You look very Terry Pratchett esque, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does yeah. look like a hair yeah, left look. I like that one, Jules. <laughs> that <laughs> Tony stick on. <laughs> so, Paul, so Paul what, yes. what's your ambitions for two thirteen? I mean, what, what, what would you like to sell more of, or service more? What, what, what where, where are you going? Oh well, you know, in the past, I've been directed by what sells most. You know, that seems to be the most logical thing to do, but. Um, Really, for me, 2013 is more about, uh, it's less about me, that's how I feel. I feel more about helping others and not just helping them and not just saying yes when someone asks for something, but saying, are you sure you're asking for the right thing? Actually turning people away, but just the other week, uh, um, someone said, oh, will you design and develop this um, sort of like checkout system thing for me? And I said, wouldn't it be better if you asked, came back with something else? Bearing in mind I can do anything in the world for you. Why don't you go away, have a think about what you really want and come back and you'll get far more value for money if you go with a different idea. And I wasn't planting the seed of, of an actual idea. I wasn't saying, why don't you do this specific thing? I was saying, why don't you work it out before you, you know, just jump in at the deep end. Um, so kind of pushing towards, uh, yeah, like I say, these web solutions that people really want and really sort of benefit from rather than just something that does its job for a few weeks or months. That's it. Excellent. Anybody else like chucking a, a question to young Paul? I was just going to say, did the client that you've just been referring to, did the client come back to you? Uh, not yet. They're still trying to work it out. Um, so I might give them a bit of a guideline, a bit of a helping hand, as in like give them some a framework to answer some questions. But, you know, they haven't exactly disappeared. So. <laughs> Anybody else in there? Before we move on to Sir Neil? Let's move on. Okay, Sir Neil. Hello. What, uh, what, what's, what, what's, what, what's the grand scheme of things you need? What sort of clients are you looking for? What, what's, I mean, I know you've been epically busy the last few months. It's and, uh, still silly busy at the moment. Um, I've only just recently got in after working from about nine this morning. Every evening this week I'll be out, plus most evenings next week. That's including all during the day. So I suppose ideally I'd like more customers, but I don't know when I'll be able to fit them in. Uh, or apprentices. Well, yeah, but then I have to pay them, and it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tight for that. That was going to be my question, actually, to you, Neil. So you're one of the people that I know who, who has gone down the apprentice route. I just wondered how it's been working out for you. How was the process? How have you been finding it, having an apprentice? Would you recommend it to other people kind of in a similar kind of service industry? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the process itself was fairly easy. Um, I can't remember who gave me the name, but I was put in touch with the service provider. They did all the pre-interviews for me, um, and luckily I managed to get Kerry, who pretty much has streamlined the business. I've got a, a new database up and running. Um, the office work is all absolutely spot on, so it takes an awful lot of the pressure off. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, when she's gone at the end of this month, I will miss her. Mm -hmm. um, not so much because half the time she comes out with me, 
So she's actually, we're getting through the jobs quicker. Mm. But it's all the backup work as well, all the office yeah. work that she does, which I'm now going to have to pick up again. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll see how it goes, and hopefully I'll probably take somebody else on. Yeah. But it's well worth doing. I've got a quick question, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. I even wrote it down so I didn't forget it when you first joined this hangout, right? Yeah. That sounds serious. <laughs> right, no, I've heard that you can clean a lot of stuff out of, well, you're the man for carpet, aren't you? Uh -huh. uh, what can't you clean out of carpet? What is difficult, um, it, it depends on what it is. If it's a wool carpet, um, animal urine is very difficult to get out because it's very acidic. Uh, with wool being quite acidic anyway, it gets in there and it's <laughs> And it's very, very difficult to get out. Right. The well, worst yeah. things to get out is where people have put all the homemade remedies on themselves. Right. Or the floor, whatever's under the kitchen sink on the stain, and said, oh, it won't come out, when it's got 43 different chemicals thrown on top of it. Well, I did hear if you get red wine on the carpet, you put white on it. And if you get white on it, no? Possible. All the white wine will do is get rid of the colour. Well, it won't get rid of the stain. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you'll have a light coloured stain instead of a red one. But then you could get rid of that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, there you go. We're good, you know. Just keep do you still do a lot of the, um, I know you were doing the uh, crime scene cleanups. Do you still do that? Is that still quite a big part of the business? No, we're, we're knocking that on the head. We're <laughs> costing us money now. Um, right. Because of the extra insurance it's taken up. Plus, we've got a, a yellow sharps bin that we have to hire from initial. Um, right. In theory, we go out and do regular needle collections, oh. fill up the sharps bin, initial come and collect it, and we get a nice hefty profit. Mm. Unfortunately, everybody seems to take the sharps to the doctors, <laughs> who get rid of them for free, or the tag in the two, three-year contracts. So it's getting to the point where we just can't do it anymore. Right. And in terms of um, the crime scene cleaning itself, I've been out to court for one, and unfortunately the guy just ripped the carpet up and threw it in the skin, which he shouldn't have done, but his choice. Mm. And the other one, I've just done one burglary job. So it's not really worth our while anymore. Right, okay. But unfortunately, that one's going... But we're busy enough with the carpets anyway, so to be honest, it's not really having an effect. Okay, cool. Were you planning on doing somebody in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Bear in mind the publishing this. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to kill anyone. That's how rumours start. This is going. This is being broadcast, Neil. I'm going to be tarred as a criminal. I speak to you privately afterwards. <laughs> well, moving on quite quickly then. Uh, Juliet. Yeah. Um, well, you want to fire some questions to Juliet? Because I think I was the only one who fired any questions in there. To be fair. I want some <laughs> Sorry, Julia. What's your What's your um, plans? I mean, I know that you're expanding your business with different um, products, etc. So tell us a little. You know, tell us what you're thinking. Um, I, I really, I'm really kind of stuck with where I am at the moment because I really like the alternative market, doing the tattoo designs and the kind of darker scene of things. But there's also that little bit of me that's still quite passionate about the more traditional side where you get kind of the you know the sweet flowers on the um the film cover and things like that so i still like the, the more traditional lens so it's quite difficult for me to find the balance at the moment so i'm still trying to balance out the two things together because it seems like the alternative market is just shot off way ahead um because i think so, there's too many people that are sticking more on the traditional side so it's trying to push that side a little bit it's going to be quite difficult with the name desire tattoo bags but yeah. we'll still work on that <laughs> what about alternative lace work nah? yeah yeah that that kind of works like that lace with an edge the, yeah the, the lace That's work can go either way it, you know i mean for example just the swan itself it's kind of sweet and it's sort of wedgy and white but you change that to black and you've got an immediate effect mm. it's actually quite a dark idea 
we start mm. thinking of like black swan and it's quite an evil looking idea so it's it sort of works both ways a little bit i like it <laughs> i've got a question Go on. um i was gonna say do you find that you're busier now than you were, say, 12 months ago, 18 months ago? I mean, I know everybody's everybody's watching the pennies, and I was going to say, it to me, I get the impression that people are moving away from, like Christmas was, spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on a really nice, expensive present, and they're going into back towards sort of arts right. and crafts. And do you find that is that? No, no, not at all. Because I think people that that will want something that is. Um, for example, people assume, oh, you know, I'd love a patchwork quilt. But could you make me a patchwork quilt? Yeah, I can make you a patchwork quilt. Would you like me to give you the price? And the price for a king size patchwork, patchwork quilt, well made, is going to be £300 up. Mm. Yes, somebody that sees the quality of that item would pay for that because this item is not going to take me a day to make. It's going to take me five to seven full days' work to actually yeah. make it start to finish then you've got the cost of the materials on top it, it's a battle that most of us suffer that that do create from scratch that the costs are horrifically high but there is a very high-end market that understands that and they buy into the quality they don't want a cheap product they want the best product you can provide yeah. to their standard with their ideas so that's the market that I really need to go for. I've, I've got a couple of customers that are very particular about what they have and they do pay high-end prices for. If it wasn't for them I don't think I could continue to be perfectly honest. Good point. Good question Simon. Anybody else another one for Juliet? Okay looks like we're hitting on Jessica. Um, anyone want to chuck a question at Jessica? How, how did you come about the whole pink chili idea, Jess? What, the name or the actual business idea? Um, both. Um, so the business idea, well, it, I was kind of doing it for my dad's business anyway, kind of on, on the side. It was just something that he kind of needed support with. Um, and I've been hit by four redundancies in the past five years. So when my last one came up, I decided that I was going to, I've always wanted to work for myself, but I thought it was going to be a few years down the line. So I've always wanted to work as like a, a consultant in kind of, you know, marketing, social media, etc. So I just decided to set it up. Um, the name was actually Ian. You remember me when I was choosing my yes. name, didn't you? Um, yes. I was kind of toing and froing. I wanted something that was just quite different. Um, I don't know. It was just one of those picked out of the air type things, um, and I liked it. So that's how the kind of pink chili name came about. Um, and then the other business, um, Digital Diva, which is fairly new, that's that's something that I decided to separate the two businesses because I was getting a lot of crossover um, in Pink Chili. So Pink Chili is where they um, they pay me to do the work for them, but there was also a lot of people that didn't know how to do it but wanted to do it themselves. So that's why I decided to separate the two businesses. So I've got the Digital Diva business, which is the kind of training people how to use social media and digital marketing, um, and then they can go away and do it themselves. Whereas the Pink Chili is, they literally just pay me to do it for them. So, you know, they're, they're the same business, but I have I had to separate them because I was getting a bit too much kind of crossover. So, yeah, that's kind of... Um, why I decided to do so that. Is the, is the Diva one also web based? Are you also teaching people how to use the uh, social media via social media? Yes. I mean. So, okay. yeah, yeah, it's all online, it's all virtual. So, those training sessions will be done either via Skype or uh, Google Hangouts, or um, I'm working on creating some ebooks um, and hopefully maybe this year it might be next year um i'm going to do some kind of like longer training course so maybe like an eight week tra training boot camp type thing um but obviously that there's a lot of content that i need to write that needs to go into that so that's what i'm working on this year whether i'll get it finished or not i'm not sure but there'll be a couple of ebooks and things coming out and then the one on one um consulting will be you know skype or or um hangouts etc so there's a certain level of knowledge already 
happened. I mean, it kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, but part of that will be, you know, learning experience for them anyway. They're going to be, you know, like Google Hangouts, for example. Um, yeah. You know, and then people will get worksheets and handouts and things like that. Um, I'm also doing a few. <laughs> well, that'd be interesting. We better stop flagging off. Oh, he's decided to turn his webcam off. You there, Ian? That's better. Ian? Hello? Oh, no. Okay. No. I don't know what's. Um... Have you fallen out with us? Oh, sorry, not to, to speak to us anymore. It's getting better, though, Google uh, Hangouts. Um, I remember when they made it. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, and it was just really, really rubbish. But, yeah. Um, oh, I can see Ian's face now, so you must be. Oh, there. yeah, we can yeah. see Ian now. Unfortunately, I think I had a bit of a connection problem there and just crashed me out. Yeah, we lost Juliet too. We lost Juliet as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's been an interesting experience, and I'm not sure if I can say this now because that's thrown me out. So <laughs> I'm going to. Are we happy to end it now? How's the experience been anyway? Yeah, good. I really enjoyed that. I mean, there's, there's still some improvements to be made here. Um, maybe I've got too many screens open for other things, which was uh, a bit of faux pas, in my opinion. I'm going to try and upload this. I'm not sure if I can still do that. Um, 
and you'll be notified. We will do some others, but one of the things I'd like to do is I, as an example, specifically just talk about, say, James. We'd ask, you know, so James would be the um, expert of a particular hangout, or, or Jess, or Neil, whatever, or various other people. I want to also invite um, other people, experts in there. I'm not a great lover of the word expert, but you know, do you know what I mean? Uh, and which hopefully be interesting for, for all our businesses uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll share them widely. Hopefully I can save this. I think, guys and girls, I think this is going to be quite interesting because I think it's going to attract a lot of curious eyes, what we've done today. Um, so I'm going to be doing some SEO on the, if I can, i edit the um, video and I'm going to share that widely. So. Um, let, let's see how it goes, and maybe we never know. You may all get some business out of it. So, um, and, and I love your glasses, by the yeah. way, James. Absolutely fabulous. Sorry, sorry, um, gone. One idea I quite like is um, with with your idea of uh, having an expert, like just a hangout with a theme, you know, mm. about that specific person. Is I think the tagline is almost like they should be able to teach you at least one thing that you can take away from it. So it's like everybody within it has learned something for mm. themselves and hopefully also the viewer is along for the ride as well. So it's like it's also quite good to see people's reactions in these little pictures along the bottom when someone says something. I see Neil just like, well, he doesn't stop grinning, does he? But <laughs> yeah, it's, so yeah, good idea, Ian. Yeah. Well, potentially, I mean, the, 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 the possibilities are endless because the more creative you can be, you can have backdrops, you can dress up, wear silly hats like me, and uh, Paul, Paul was the leader on that. Um, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. I mean, you can do these individually. I mean, I, mean, I was telling um, Ian earlier, actually, um, I saw one Google Hangout where this guy um, did it as a game show. So somebody was the the game show host and all of the people kind of in the hangout were like on a game show. So it was kind of, you know, questions. It was quite cheesy and stuff, but it, you know, it, worked, it was quite good. It worked pretty well. You know, people were buzzing in, you know, certain things. But yeah, Ian's right. The amount of stuff you can do with Google Hangouts now, you know, you just need to get creative with it, really. Uh, people, you know, doing um, like the... Oh, Paul Dre keeps add, adding... Thing the, yeah. to the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ding dong. You're adding stuff. <laughs> they, it, well, I mean, they're, they're the cheesy creatives, but I mean, you can obviously, you know, you guys are very creative. You, you can come up with loads of things, but we'll, we'll, we'll gently go along uh, and see what we can create because, um, I'd like to say, the, the possibilities and opportunities are endless, especially in specific products. Where you can, you know, show the show us them a bit more um, and go into a bit more detail too. So, um, any questions by anybody to round off? No. Have you enjoyed, have you enjoyed yourself? Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Over and out. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 How do I get out? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to end the broadcast here. That could be it. See you all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.